Hi, everyone. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I'm a theoretical physicist and a juggler. And I'm a huge fan of Paul Dirac. He's one of the founding fathers of quantum mechanics. And he once said, God used beautiful mathematics in creating the universe. Today, we will do something a little bit less epic. So we will use simple mathematics to create beautiful juggling. So how do we create our theory for mathematical, our mathematical theory for juggling? First, let's look at this pattern. This is a three ball cascade. It's one of the first patterns every new juggler learns. Maybe we can understand the pattern a little bit better when we look at it from a different perspective. So imagine there was a camera at the ceiling and it would film me while I'm juggling and walking along this direction. Then the green ball would leave a trace that looks a little bit like this. So let's see how this builds up. So I start with the green ball in my hand, and then I walk this direction, and I throw from the left to the right, to the left, to the right, to the left, and to the right. And the two other balls would leave a trace like this. So and you can hear juggling has a very distinct rhythm. Whenever I catch a ball, there's a beat. And we will now count these beats to make our mathematical theory. So let's focus on the green ball, and we will realize it always lands on the third beat. Three, one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. So now we will call the throw with which I've thrown the gre green ball a three throw. And when, the, when I've thrown the three throw, I have time to throw two more balls. That's why I'm doing the three ball cascade with three throws. So now, as good mathematicians, we will now generalize this concept to the concept of end throws. So an end throw lands on the nth beat. In other words, after I have thrown an end throw, I can throw n minus 1 additional balls. And when I have n balls and only do n throws, then this is the basic n ball juggling pattern. Great, yeah. Now that nobody is confused, I can show some examples. So here comes the basic one ball juggling pattern. These are one throws. And you see how low I throw the ball, and I have one minus one beats time to throw another ball. Yeah, I can feel your amazement. OK, so we, <laughs> so we quickly go on to two balls. So two ball juggling. I have one ball in my right hand, one in my left, and I throw them very little. And since it's a basic pattern, I throw them as little as I can. And this is I don't throw them at all. So this is your basic two-ball juggling pattern, almost as amazing as one-ball juggling. So, and we've already seen three-ball juggling, so I move on to four-ball juggling. It's actually the first real trick I'm doing. So this is two balls in my right hand and two in my left hand, and then I combine it. And you can see how the green balls always stick to my right hand and the red balls always stick to my left hand. OK, so now comes five-ball juggling. And I asked the organizers of this conference if it's OK if I show off a little bit. And they said, yeah, of course. <laughs> this is what TEDx is about. So for your entertainment, before I will juggle the black belt of juggling, I will balance one ball on my foot. Then I will balance one ball on my head. Then I will juggle three balls. Let this ball fall into the pattern. Then kick up this ball from down here. And finally, juggle five balls. And if this works, you go crazy for a second. <laughs> OK. So I'm just building up the tension. <laughs> ah, 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 I don't. Don't worry. Don't worry. Ev every good juggler has three tries, so. Here comes my first try. <laughs> Again, the tension. We had this part. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and on the first try, I made it on the first try. So let's look at the pattern once more. And let's focus on the green ball. And you can see how similar this is to one ball uh, and three ball juggling. The balls cross. And while the green ball is in the air, I have time to throw the four other balls. <laughs> yeah, sure. Otherwise, I couldn't juggle five balls. So 
We can summarize. An even end throw lands on the same hand, like for two ball juggling, or four ball throws, or let's say six throws. And an odd end throw crosses. And the higher the number, the higher the throw. So now that we've defined end throws, we can do a cool thing. Now we can combine different end throws to a new pattern. And I will show an example. So here's a nice one, 4-4-1. Four, four, it goes like this. I throw a 4 here, then a 4 here, and then I hand over a ball with a 1. So it goes 4-4-1. Four, four, Once more, 4-4-1. Four, four, and continuously, looks like this. And all the three balls here are doing the same thing. So let's look at the green ball. It's doing a 1, 4, 4, 1, 4, 4, 1. So maybe we'll look at another example, 5 three, one. In 5 three, one, I throw a 5 here, then a little bit lower 3 here, and then I hand over a 1. So it goes like this, 5 three, one. Once more, 5 three, one. So and you can see how the green ball now is just doing 3s, and the two other balls are doing the 5s and 1s. So we could say we can represent the juggling trick by a sequence of end throws, or by a sequence of numbers, and we call this a side swap. We will figure out in a minute why we call it a side swap. But there are some rules how we have to interpret such a string. So when I say 531, what I actually mean is 531, 531, 531. So I could have well said 315 or 153, but it's just convenient to start with one of the higher throws. And then, to keep our notation for this talk very simple, we have the rule that we catch and throw only alternating. So we say we exclude synchronous throws. So no tricks like this. And we have another rule. We say each of our hands catches and throws only one ball at a time. So no throws like this. And no tricks like this. Or let's say like this. <laughs> like this. Because here, you see, at, at one point, I was throwing two balls at a time. And then I said, uh, a side swap stands for a juggling trick. Actually, it stands for a whole class of juggling trick, tricks, because this notation ignores any specific body movement or hand position. So the basic three ball cascade is 3-3-3. Three, three, three. But also, this is 3-3-3. Three, three, three. Or for the skinny jugglers, this is 3-3-3, three, three, three. <laughs> and this is 3-3-3, three, three, three. and let's say this, and this, and even <laughs> this is 3-3-3. Three, three, three. Thank you. Thank you. Because I, I, I did not change the rhythm at which I catch and throw the balls. So in these side swaps, they have a very cool property. If you want to know how many balls you need, yeah, <laughs> I will we will see how clear this is. Uh, if you want to know how many balls you need to juggle a side swap, you just take the average. So you sum up all the numbers of the end throw and then divide it by the pattern length and you get the number of balls. So let's check this for one example. Note already, five, three, one. We sum up. Five plus three plus one gives nine. Divided by three gives three. And yeah, five, three, one was a five ball trick. Uh, three ball trick, sorry. So, and in the last part of my talk, I will now show you how we can actually prove that this central theorem of side swap juggling is actually true. And on the way, we will generate a lot of new side swaps for us to juggle. Because it happens that you cannot juggle any, any random combination of numbers. So if you would want me to juggle your telephone number, this would probably not work. But I will show you now a method how we can generate side swaps that can be juggled in the way I showed you. And we will demonstrate this on a very cool example. It's the side swap 7131. And 7131 is a combination of the side swap 13, which looks like this. And this is one of the first side swaps I was doing. It was in winter in 1997. And I was on the schoolyard with two snowballs. And I was doing 131313 one, without knowing. And the other part of this trick is 71, which is a four ball trick. And it looks like this. And this is the trick that Krusty the Clown would usually do when he juggles four balls. So in combination, 7131 one, looks like this. 
and you can see how the green ball is just doing one threes and the two red balls are doing sevens and ones. Okay, fine. We know that this trick is working. So this is a good starting point to come up with a new trick on this basis. So, and what are we doing to come up with a new trick? We swap the seven and the one in the side swap, seven, one, three, one. So what are we actually doing? We swap the moments at which we throw the red and the green ball, but we want to make sure that the balls still land on the same position and on the same, more important, on the same beat. Because when the balls land on the same beat that they did in 7131, we know that the new trick is working as well. So what do we have to do? Now we throw the red ball one beat earlier, uh, one beat later. So it has to spend one beat less time in the air to, sp uh, to land on the same beat. Before we have thrown it with a seven, now we have to throw it with a six. So the red seven has to become a red six. And the green ball, we throw the green ball now one beat earlier. So when we want them to land on the same beat as before, it has to spend one beat longer time in the air. So the green one has to become a green two. Maybe you can see this on this little animation that they still land on the same beat. Okay, so how does the new side swap now look like? It's two, six, three, one, which looks like this. Well, that was a drop, that's not the, so let's look at this, it goes like this. And since I swapped the red and the green ball, now that the red and the green loop are intertwined and the green ball is wandering through the pattern. Now it's up here and it's down here. Okay, great, this worked. And more important for our central theorem of side swap juggling, we did not change the number of balls with which we are juggling because we just swapped the moments at which we throw two balls. And we did not change the average because we added one to one number and subtracted one from the other number. So now we do what mathematicians always do when they figure out that something is working. We iterate the process. So we started with 7131, swapped the seven and the one, and got 2631, which is the same as 6312. And now we do it again. We swap the, th the six and the three, and we get 4512, which looks like this. Here the green ball is just doing fours, and the red balls are doing 512. Most people would miss the two, because I basically do nothing for one beat, so I try to emphasize it. Okay. <laughs> and now we swap again. Now we swap the five and the one, and we get four, two, four, two, which looks like this. Here's the two. <laughs> yeah, this one is lame, but you still can do fun stuff. <laughs> this, or the yo-yo, the orbit, <laughs> the factory. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> And now, now we're almost done. Now we just swap the four and the two, and we're back, we we'll swap both of them, and we're back at the beginning. We're back at the simple three ball cascade. It's three, three, three. And we know that we can juggle this with three balls because it just consists of three throws. So now we have finally proven that we can juggle all the other tricks as well with three balls, and we have generated them on the way to, to juggle them for us. So now you all know the math. And I'd like to leave you with another quote from Paul Dirac. When you're receptive and humble, mathematics will lead you by the hand. So grab some balls, start to juggle, and feel how mathematics literally leads your hands. Thank you very much.